is Susan Nash with AAPG, and we're going to be talking about technology and future trends in our science and technology showcase. Today, we'll be talking with Chuck Toops of World PMO, as well as Mark Hemzet, who's also working with World PMO. So welcome, Chuck and Mark. And Chuck, would you like to get started and tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, thank you, Susan and AAPG. Uh, for you know this opportunity to talk with you guys about you know some of the relevant activities that are happening you know in this new economy. So uh, World PMO effectively we're um, uh, been delivering you know programs and project related activity inside the oil and gas industry since 2005, uh, based in Houston, and um, you know we deal with uh, changing dynamics of you know what needs to be delivered, whether it's heavy metal projects. Um, or it's technology projects, or it's acquisition or merger type projects. So, uh, so we have to do a lot with, uh, you know, with the shifting change of the industry. And so we think we're coming now into a place where we call this disruptive surge that we'll, we'll cover today. Well, that's very interesting. And I know that Mark, you work on strategy. Do you have any thoughts about the new directions? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, Chuck and I have, uh, and, and the rest of the World PMO team, um, we've been meeting and, and discussing, you know, how, what the world is going to look like um, after COVID-19. And so Chuck's going to be able to, you know, go into some, some of the detail um, regarding that. And, and like he said, he, he's actually based on the, you know, some of the work that he's done with oil and gas companies in the past. He's almost, you know, the, you know, of course I have to say this, but he's almost the, you know, the perfect person to help um, discuss the future of work and what it will look like because of the, the project-based teams that he's been working with globally um, for about the last 15 years. That's great. Well, let's jump right in. Can't wait to see you. Okay, good, good. Well, well, thank you, Susan. Again, thank you, AAPG, and, and I know ACE is coming as well. So, uh, okay, so we talk about disruptive surge in the future of work. So let me just go through a couple, couple high-level bullet points. And so the world economy has been shocked, and we all know that. Um, and the effects of that are really not fully known. And as Mark alluded to, you know, there's a series of scenario planning that we've been doing, um, but we cannot really approximate and get it into um, – um, uh, enough standard deviation of accuracy to really go anywhere with it yet. Uh, and I'm sure that a lot of people that listen to this video are in the same place. So uh, anyway, so that's kind of where we are. And so we're entering an uncertain time, you know, needless to say, I mean, I'm not speaking anything new to anybody on the call. Um, so, you know, but we're not clear which companies will resurface and how they will even reenter the change oil and gas marketplace. So really a key zone. We know that the oil and gas marketplace will continue, but we just don't know who the main players will be. Obviously there's assumptions, you know, and how they're gonna re-enter. I mean, what are they gonna look like? And um, so, um, so it's a given that the survivors, you know, will be required to reorient in their, both their strategy and the strategic investments. And in some cases, even adjust their mission within the new economy. Um, so this, you know, talk of reinvention that we kind of ran through in the in the 90s with, you know, re-engineering um, is obviously back on the table again today. So, but then really the real question for us was how will these new activities get done? You know, will, will they look the same? Yeah. And will the same players be around? Uh, we're obviously seeing shifting. We're hearing, you know, you know, odes of, you know, bankruptcy here or, you know, you know, chapter 11 filings and such like that. And then the other question is, are they going to be viable in the same industry? So these are some significant questions that we just can't answer for some period ahead. And uh, we're going to see these obviously unfold within the industry here over the coming periods. And we just don't know what it looks like. You know, I, I'm, I'm just waiting for the close of the futures contracts for this month, see what happens. So, but that leads us to how will we get things done in this new economy, right? Effectively, we're going to have to do more with less. It's just not, it's not even a question. It's an imperative. Um, that we're going to have to do more with less as we move into this new economy, even though we're not clear what that new economy is. And we just know we need to bring, we need to bring this to the, to, to the table. So, well, some need to be done the exact same way we did prior to 2020. So obviously there are certain types of activity that we have well-founded design engineering and delivery and solution delivery principles that aren't going to change. And those things are the same. 
but many things are going to have to accelerate their business processes and they're going to make them faster. Yeah. We're going to have to consume a lot less capital and human resources. And, and, and this doesn't require a lot of innovative practices to get that work done. And so it's just, it's really a lot shifting here. So basically accelerated change. We've heard it talked about at least a decade. You know, it's no longer in the future. It's here and we're going to have to adapt and innovate and produce value or we're not going to do business in this new economy. Yeah. So using digital technologies and other new economy patterns to even compete is going to be really key here. So, and then all along with this, we have complexity on the rise. So to get things done, to be able to pull together the solutions to get things done, again, we have uncertainty on who is going to be in the marketplace, uh, what technologies will be available, what cap capabilities will be in place to be able to deliver that activity. So, Anyway, so this is what we are con con saying that, you know, the future of work for us is a, an area of study that we've been working on for a few years in, in anticipation of the, the wave of digitalization that's coming into the marketplace. But now we're, we really shifted because it's really more of a disruptive search. Yeah. So anyway, so let me just go, let's look at a couple of the sources and effects of well, um, let me jump in for a second. Okay, so one thing that you said is quite interesting. All of it's interesting. One thing that jumped out to me, he said that complexity is on the rise. So what a great opportunity for, for you, uh, Chuck and Mark, to help people make their processes less complex. Yes, that's, that's correct, Susan. And so um, the, the idea with complexity and the real problem is as you move into the innovative technologies that need to be implemented to be able to produce value, you're moving into a very complex zone. In some cases, it may be real simple to change a supplier here or there that does something better and or, you know, change, you know, an, an interface or a portal of how, you know, a work order gets, you know, you know uh, captured and, you know, and orders delivered to the field. But the transition into innovation and producing value, the complexity is going to be great. So, Mark, any, com any comments on this? Okay, well, Mark's on mute. No, well, excuse, excuse me. Yeah, so um, we, you know, even Susan and I, um, with uh, one of our previous workshops, um, we, we were looking at uh, digital technologies. And so, um, you know, now essentially, you know, digital technology is not going to be, um, it's not going to be, it's going to be the norm essentially. And so um, there's a lot of, you know, startups in, in the oil and gas space. And we now need to look at how, you know, oil and gas companies are going to be uh, not only utilizing them, but also uh, integrating them because currently they're all working in, in silos. Okay, good. Yeah, so there's there's lots of opportunities here, but with the complexity on the rise. But anyway, let's look at a, some of the sources, effects, and solution uh, for the disruption um, that is upon us. So, uh, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna move through this slide pretty or try to go as quickly as possible. There's some things that are relevant, and other ones there's just some detail. So really, we do, the disruptive surge. So there's sources of disruption, and some of these areas of change. Then we obviously have the effects and solutions. So you know when we start looking at you know the sources of disruption. You know, a couple of those areas are really we're looking at the future of work, the 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 how the what work needs to be done, and then how that work is going to be uh, uh, done in this in this new world or this new economy that we're not really clear what that is and what it looks like yet. And then obviously, then we have another source of disruption in the context of the uh, the activity transformation, meaning how work will be done is going to be another key area. So we're down in in the area of actually putting together functional and non functional requirements to get some objective or outcome delivered. Um, and so, you know, how that work is getting done is changing. And it's changing rapidly, by the way. Uh, you know, so so with this, and you know, one of the things we see, and, and uh, sorry, I went too fast. You know, is that another source of disruption is digital technologies. So digital technology is a big, big area. I'm going to cover a couple of topics here, but uh, it's a big area. So then, some of the effects of that disruption is basically there's new rules of work. Right? We all know that we can't go into the downtown zone and just collaborate with people in a building like we did, you know, just three months ago. Um, and so that's just one example. And these are obviously unfurling and we'll know more as period moves forward. And then we have obviously an effective disruption is 
activity transformation. How is that work going to be done into the future? We may have to change completely. How, you know, how do we cue people to go offshore, right? Uh, you know, can we run the helicopters the way, same way, as an example? There's all kinds of areas that are going to be impacted. Um, and so then, and then we have a, a series of what we call technical debt on the technology side. So there's, there's a lot of things that we're going to uh, effectively uh, move into legacy state. And uh, that's a real problem, right? So because we need to be able to extract all that value out of a lot of that, and we don't want it to become technical debt. So that means we're going to have to transition it into a new system for continued consumption and value production. So some of the solutions. So one of the areas we see in this whole disruption is that we're going to end up with a, a transition to more organic teams and delivery networks to get things done. And the reason is, is we're, we don't have the dollars to basically maintain all of the functionality that we need to have to get our work done. Um, and so we're going to have to go and we're going to have to trust more into these delivery networks to be able to get certain functions done um, in our in our own individual supply chain, whatever that is. And then a couple other areas we're, you know, obviously we're focused in the area of project services and then the insurance and the insurance of those controls, you know, whether they're privacy controls, whether they're, you know, COVID types controls, regulatory controls and the delivery of activity. So, um, so these are kind of high level, uh, um, some sources, effects and, you know, solutions of disruption. So we're kind of move a couple of things. I'm not going to go over these uh, in general. You know, we talk about things like sources. We got a gig economy. The way people are working is changing. You know, we have generational shifts. So effectively, we have a series of the baby boomers are really ra going to rapidly move um, out of the work workplace now. If they're set for retirement, they're going to probably move on to it now. Uh, and or we'll have voluntary severance packages being delivered by a lot of the majors. Uh, so lots lots happening there. And then uh, last but not least in this mode is the talent challenge, right? So it's effect effectively getting the right people um, that have the, the key capabilities in some of the new technologies. So um, another area that we move into in the effects side is the capability sourcing. So that's that's a key area for us at World PMO because obviously we have to lay out and architect and frame you know the outcomes that a consumer or customer needs and then we want to basically access that capability sometimes in-house uh, sometimes we have to go you know you know across the world to be able to get the right person and get that work done. Um, and, and deliver on either the sprint or the, the, the project work stream that we need to deliver. So then we also have automation and uh, job losses because of automation. So this is another big trend that we've seen uh, being uh, uh, communicated over the last decade. Um, and we know that with the rise of digital technologies that we're moving more to automation, we have to move a lot faster now. Um, our supply chains, we've got to automate as much as possible, especially in decision making uh, analysis, assessment, and decision-making areas. And so that's going to reflect in job losses as well. And so a lot of people need to run the automation very quickly now. Um, yeah, so so then we have this activity transformation. And so when I go there, I know I've touched on this a couple of times, but the functions, methods, and process of how things are going to get done is really the key. And so those are areas that we spend a lot of time in uh, in understanding how to get things delivered. Chuck, how can companies um, prepare for activity transformation by uh, reducing uh, their technical debt? Well, again, Mark, the key thing with technical debt is basically you don't want to leave stranded your legacy value, right? So in some cases, you're carrying around in technologies, uh, whether they're systems or data uh, that either could be stranded you know, or isolated and not brought into the cloud. And then what ends up happening, you're still want to carry that uh, with you. So you're effectively in the context of activity transformation. In this case, it's really a solution transformation more. Um, you did really to take it in this case, let's get it to the cloud where we can have, you know, everybody can utilize that and or, you know, isolated and, and, you know, know that you're going to pay the cost to be able to maintain that, you know, in some cases outdated or potentially insecure system. And yeah, so anyway, Solution, that's solution specific, uh, Mark, because it's kind of hard to touch it specifically. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So, so okay, some other sources of disruption, you know, we talk about automation, you know, we've got energies are big domains. I can't, uh, you know, see that that last one uh, were covered. And so, but, you know, again, there's all these digital technologies, especially, you know, you look at cognitive computing, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning and big data, huge areas. Um, you know, we look at automation really driven a lot, you know, by the internet of things, 
or the industrial internet of things. And then obviously robotic process automation, huge area, um, you know, at health and biotech. And then we have another thing around trust networks. I know we've all heard about identity management and digital IDs and all these things are just rapidly running downhill um, and that are going to have to be accounted for, you know, whether you're small or large. So, you know, the, the, some, some of the regulatory requirements, whether they're relaxed or not, you know, it's going to apply to all of us, you know, working in this new economy. So anyway, so that's just some areas and sources. So let's go back at, you know, obviously we have chaos, what we call, we call chaos in the context of projects and the complexity rising. So simple activities are easy to do. It's in the, it's moving into digital tech that we're really running into higher or medium to high level complexity just because of what they're touching. Um, so there's a, a significant rise there. So then so level solutions, what we call our exponent functions. So with exponent, uh, effectively, uh, what happens there is really about the strategy and the architecture uh, uh, and framing the outcomes that need to be done. And those things need to be done. So we all know about generally architecting of solutions and such, but in this case, we need to architect the, the, the work that needs to be done um, not just the solution, but the process, how it's going to be done, what capabilities need to be applied, you know, where can they come from um, to be sourced because it's a key area. Um, so anyway, this is a, a very important area in, in a solution space for us. Um, then we also have a, over here an activity transformation, you know, this activity integrator. Uh, but the key thing is there's multiple areas here that need to be dealt with. And I want to kind of jump into the solutions here. Um, and so basically, so to minimize impact of these solutions is really there's a couple of areas that you can do, and whether you're a small guy or whether you're a big guy, and it, it, it's really important. I mean, obviously there's more details. I just summarize a few here. And one of those, you wanna really wanna maintain and or even enhance your digital strategy. And if you don't know what a digital strategy is, um, take a look. Uh, it's very important. You know, there, there's, there's various capable, uh, you know, consultancies that can help you there. But, and if you don't know and don't have understanding of digital strategy, well, then that's something maybe we need to talk about. But again, um, it's very important for you to have a digital strategy because the way that you do your business today is gonna be impacted by this digital way, um, whether, whether you're, you're even in a viable industry or not, or viable function. So, you know, key areas. So then another one is understanding the future roadmap and adoption sequence for your industry. And so in the context of oil and gas, we have so much uncertainty right now, it's kind of hard to pinpoint this, but we do know some, we do know that there are specific areas that we're going to be moving hard at, right? We, we obviously are going to continue recovery, right? We're going to continue exploration. We're going to continue field automation, right? We're going to continue, you know, uh, uh, better ways of transport. And so all these things, you know, the efficiencies across the supply chains and, um, you know, need to be dealt with. And, some of these digital technologies could be key to that, right? So uh, key to your survival in it. Um, so get started with your digital roadmap, all right? Very important. So basically it's like, what do we do today and how can we get past that, you know, utilizing maybe some of these digital technologies and then prepare for a major change in processes, how that work is gonna get done um, and how do you need to adapt your processes to deal with that, right? So this is a time to get innovative. Uh, we believe that there is a potential for a major um, uh, innovation way for us to happen um, as we come out of this. We just don't know when we're coming out of it. So that's really the key. So, um, you know, so, so Susan, um, that's, that's kind of the key. Let me uh, back up. Mark, do you have any guys have, have any questions related to this or it's. Can you pull up the slide again, Chuck? Hey, sure. Mark. Yeah. Just one second. Uh, Thank you kindly. Okay, good. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I got. Work is I got caught up in the PowerPoint on. thing here. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. Bring that back what, up. What, what's remarkable is that a, an individual could take one bubble in what looks like a mind map. Yeah. As okay. well as the big picture. Can you guys see this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Okay. So it's on that monitor. They can see it. Okay. Good, Jimmy. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to get back to wherever this was, Mark. So there's a lot of buildups here. Yeah, and so, and Susan, Mark, I mean, in this, you know, really the key here is over the digital side, but there's just lots, and it's not to go through all of them. These, each one of these has their own challenges. They're influencers into how we're going to structure plans and activities to get work done. Yeah, so, uh, and all of us need to. 
Well, I keep thinking about three months ago, in terms of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a lot of us are right, right up at, you know, close to self-actualization, between you know, four and five, getting close to self-actualization, even though there were some issues, you know, pricing or debt or whatever in the industry, but personally and, and professionally. And then suddenly with the pandemic and the price collapse, we're all at basically zero or level one, which is one. physiological needs. It's like, okay, now we prioritize how do we stay safe and healthy and have food, water, shelter, energy. That's right. Bar, you know, basically that's right. And then energy, yeah, energy, and uh, there's a couple more, right? So that go with that vulnerability, maybe. Yeah, so <laughs> Susan, I agree. It's a complete shift, right? And so it's important for all of us. And um, basically, look, we're, we're going to make it through. We just don't know what what's on the other side of through. So, but, I mean, hopefully it won't be zombie apocalypse. I mean, <laughs> if... Yeah, I mean there there could be some there could be some misery, but at the same time, it's a time for us to re innovate and reinvent ourselves. Well, and so, there will be and there will be misery if we don't jump in there. And and one thing I, I've always I've appreciated Mark's mindset too of proactive. Um, so Chuck, can you delve into the exponent function for us? Because some you know some folks may not know uh, of what that is in terms of the solutions for disruption. Oh, yeah, well, that's good, Mark. Okay, well, the context of the exponent. So, you know, we've been delivering, you know, cross, gosh, we've delivered over across 50 countries over the last, you know, 15 or so years. Um, and so we've learned a lot about ultimately what we need to do to basically prepare for scale delivery, number one. Number two is to basically uh, understand how we're going to control that flow based upon, you know, the, the faucet that we're given, right? Because we've got to balance, you know, money, time, um, uh, and return on investments. So in this case, so the context of the exponent is basically uh, the exponents are uh, sp specific industry experts within a specific field of work. So we have about 400 different areas. Um, and so what we'll do is that we, we provide an exponent to deal with the, uh, the, uh, the visioning place. So somebody needs to get work done. They have demand that needs to be fulfilled or they have a vision of what they want to do. And then that exponent will then deal with, you know, the ends of that and then basically the pathway, the ends to the outcomes, you know, to deliver that. And so then what will happen is then they will write effectively a prescription, right, a set of requirements um, that need to be done to basically have the best opportunity um, to get that work done at the least, uh, with the least drag on the process, you know, including, you know, cost, time, and return. Yeah, so anyway, there's a lot to this one, Mark. Um, I, I don't have enough time really to dive into the exponent, but the key thing is, is think of it as basically a, a, a supportive, right? It's not a strategy person that deals with your business strategy. They deal with the outcomes that you want to achieve. Um, and then they build a plan and then various approaches on how to get that done at the, you know, based upon the uh, ingredients that we have available. Again, money, time, and return. Yeah, so. That's great. That's well, so if one wants to get in touch with you, would you mind going back to the first screen and we'll um, okay. yeah, let me figure out that. your contact information. Yeah. And just in the meantime, I want to thank you, Chuck and, and Mark, for, for, for being here today. And it's a lot to think about. And it really encourages each one of us to take responsibility for where we can contribute in this matrix. Yes, I completely agree. So yeah, so really, yeah, Susan, thank you for having us. I'll let me get back to this slide. So, you know, basically, we're just seeing this huge widespread adoption of digital technologies. And so we're going to have to do more with less. And so that's really the key here. And so let me go, sorry, I'm, I'm dealing with PowerPoint clicks. Here we go. Um, you know, so, so we're seeing this widespread adoption of digital technology. So we're going to have to do more with less. So how do you, first of all, how do you do more, right? number one, and in what direction, and then how do you do, do it with less, right? Less human resources, less capital resources. And so those are, you know, easily at the surface looked at, but they're gonna have to be dealt with in, in your area of, uh, of the business. So, but again, the key thing is, is we're, we, we, we can make it through, we just don't know what through is yet. Exactly. Well, I want to thank you again, and want to thank you uh, for 
viewers. We've been speaking with Chuck Toops and also Mark Hamzat of World PMO. And this has been Science and Technology Workshop from AAPG. So thank you. Thank you, AAPG, and, and also thank you, Dr. Nash. Um, I, I don't know if you know people realize this, but you are definitely uh, a catalyst. And uh, I don't know what you where you get your energy from, but you know I, I definitely appreciate it. Um, thank you for helping moving the uh, the industry forward. Appreciate you. Well, thank you, Mark. Well, you are definitely a force of nature. So thank you. And, and Chuck, I'm so impressed with everything that you're doing. Okay, well, good. Thank you, Susan, and everybody. You be safe out there, and uh, you know we're going to make it through. Thank Great. you. Yes, be safe. Thank you very much, AAPG. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.